in this comic strip, for example, uh, two cavemen talking to each other, and the one says, we need more words for our language. What are we going to call that big bird thing with the leathery wings? The other guy says, what about pterodactyl? Pterodactyl? Well, what do you want to call it? Ron. Ron? Ron? Well, at least people will be able to spell it. Whatever you call the stuff, which sounds you use to describe the big um, bird with the leathery wings, doesn't really matter. That's arbitrary. Some, some languages might call it Ron, others pterodactyl. What it also shows is, however, if it's arbitrary, if it doesn't matter, then people at least have got to agree on it. Because then one guy might say, I've seen a Ron, and the other, I've seen a pterodactyl, and neither of them would know what they're talking about. And this is something that Ferdinand also uh, pointed out. The idea of this arbitrary relationship between meaning and, and form. Ah, it comes out all right. And the idea is that basically the two of them form one entity, the so-called linguistic sign. Words, um, which we already know, are linguistic signs. And they've got two parts. So they've got the sound bit, which is just the string of sounds, represented by the IPA transcription, which you know from your dictionaries, the pronunciation uh, of stuff. We're going to look at the symbols from next week onwards. Don't expect, them, uh, expect you to know them now. But the thing is, they represent the sounds. So F. Three sounds in English combined, um, and the meaning that we've got associated with it in our minds, that's why I zoomed in into um, uh, Saussure's head, um, it's a mental concept that you associate as a speaker of English. Now the thing is, it's completely arbitrary that your mental concept of an apple uh, should be associated with F, P, and L. And we know that it's arbitrary because different languages use different sounds. Apfel in German, Pom in French, Olmo in Hungarian. Okay, completely unrelated languages. Still, that bit here, the concept is going to be the same for all of those speakers. A Hungarian, uh, a French person, and a German, and English, they're all going to have the same concept of an apple. Uh, but they use different sounds associated with that. And because every language has got different strings of sounds for most of the, um, um, of the linguistic signs, we say it's arbitrary. In German, willkürlich. It's random. Okay? You can't predict it. If you don't speak Hungarian, you will not know which sounds you're going to use, uh, use to refer to the concept of an apple. Simple as that. As I already said, with the pterodactyl and Ron example, and with the Apfel, Olmo, um, Pom example, if it's arbitrary, if it's random, you've got to learn it if you're a kid, and you also got to agree on it in the speech community. Okay. All speakers of English must agree that it's apple, apple and not olmo. And Sister also said that in um, our brain, because he, he sees this as a mental concept, um, is works in a way that usually evokes these concepts and, these, um, and the form in a reciprocal fashion. What this means is, if you think of an apple, okay, the mental concept, then the string of sounds apple will also come to your mind. And if you think, if someone says apple, then you will also have the mental concept that is um, conjured up. The idea is that they're like two sides of a coin, you know, heads and tails. You can't have one without the other. Love and marriage, <laughs> um, heads or tails. A leaf um, has got two sides, okay? And you can't just strip off one. Um, that's the idea. The two go together because that's how we learn them as a unit. But it's important to keep this here, the linguistic sign, because it's such an important phenomenon um, that the concept bit is called signified and the form sound bit is called the signifier. So in linguistics you will often hear that signifier and signified, i.e. form and meaning, um, have an arbitrary relationship because different languages use um, different forms. This kind of thing works for mental concepts of things which exist in the real world, okay? It also works, and that's important, this thing here is a mental concept of an apple. Um, not quite a picture that you've got in your head, but it's definitely something that is mentally going on. Um, it's not a real apple. We know that because last time we cracked open someone's skulls, um, there wasn't an apple in their head. Okay? It's important, it's just a mental concept. Why do we make the distinction? Because there are, there are linguistic signs for which there are 
know things in the real world, okay? I hate to break this to you, brace yourself. Father Christmas doesn't exist. But still, you've got a mental concept. I'm on a, I'm on a roll. Um, unicorn. <laughs> hey, someone, someone had to break it to you. There are no unicorns. Wizards. Don't exist. Witches. Sorry. Vampires. Nah. Okay, I think I've created the kind of hostile environment that I just love working in. The fact that for some of these times we have got real world entities, like real apples you can hold on to and eat and so on, um, it's not necessarily relevant um, for the linguistic sign. It's important that it's got a mental concept and a sound associated with it.